back to work on the OG Red Zuma. So we got a few things to add to it today. I went ahead and got a Pelini clutch because right now what's in there is a Melosi clutch. Non-adjustable clutch, which is kind of a pain in the ass to change clutch springs. Not a big fan of the non-adjustable ones. I mean, I really love the Pelini and the Stage 6 uh, clutch with the adjustable tightness for the springs. It's a game changer. So we're absolutely doing that. And I went with another quick throttle. I just couldn't do it. I loved, I loved the way these bikes have felt. I've been adding quick throttles to like 99% of all the bikes I do. But with all that being said, what we have in here right now, CBT wise, is a stage six overrange kit. So we have a overrange rear pulley, we have an overrange belt, and the over overrange front variator. Well, I've been really wanting to try an overrange setup on my F12, so I'm actually gonna be pulling the overrange setup off of the pre bug because I actually don't like the overrange on the pre bug. I, I love the pre bugs, how they feel with just the regular size pulleys, and everybody's been telling me that the F12s love the overrange kit. So I'm gonna be pulling the overrange off of here, and I'm gonna be pulling the stage six variator and the regular pulley and everything off of this one, putting it on the pre bug, and uh, hopefully we'll get this thing dialed. I basically want this bike to feel how this bike does, and it doesn't right now. It's the same setup, crank and carb and intake and cylinder wise but CVT is totally different and the bikes feel totally different. Also, I'm not too sure on the lifespan of the motor that's in here, so we might be pulling the head off just to check out everything in the cylinder and everything like that. One more thing I wanna do is reinforce the rear frame on this because when you add scrape bars to these bikes, the scrape bars are almost too strong for the frame on these. I'll show you more when I take the plastics off, but the frame design on these is really weak, um, specifically on this bolt area, and there's been people that have snapped this bolt off multiple multiple times with either scraping the stock bar or just any bar in general because this small little I want to say it's an M8 bolt right here is way too weak scrape it the pressure on these will allow it to pivot and everything is basically just being held on by the threads on this little thing so uh, I've seen a lot of people strip this and it's better to get a bigger bolt stronger drill out the scrape bar a little bit more All right, going all the way in right now because now I'm just curious. This bike just hasn't sounded too good and uh, we'll see what's under here. Let's see, here goes, ready, ready, here goes nothing. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. Looks like it might have had a leak though. It looks uh, around the edges right here. This O-ring looks toasted too. Top of the piston doesn't look too bad either. Cylinder walls look good. We might send it, boys. But no in and out play. We might have to send it, boys. I got a full rebuild on the way. I got a new cylinder and crank and everything on the way. There's a little noise in there. I feel like that's what I hear when it's revving really loud. So it's like a clacking. Might be the crank, might be the bearing. But all right, after checking everything in here, took a light, went through, there's no scoring in the cylinder at all. The head looks way better, cleaned it up as much as I could to get most of this residue off inside of the head. Put a little bit of Honda Bond on the head since this is a used O-ring and I don't have another one to throw in here. So uh, we'll let that seal and I'll throw all the CVT stuff in here and then we'll go test ride it tomorrow. But uh, everything looks good on the cylinder. There is that little bit in the bottom end of the play that I was talking about that I'm worried about. But uh, overall, I think this, this motor is going to hold, so I'm not too worried about it as much as I thought. But Alright, it's time to throw the CVT setup together now in here with getting rid of the overrange. So I got a stage 6 variator now. We took everything out of the F12. So I got a stage 6 variator, regular size, not the overrange stage 6. Um, I put three 6 grams, three five fives, making it a total, making a total of 33 grams total. And now we'll be running a Melosi wing bell, which I do love these bells. We'll run an NCY rear pulley, which I'm not sure if we'll keep. I feel like that could have been part of my tuning issue too. I usually run stock rear pulleys. But we have a stage six clutch, orange springs, which are the medium springs, uh, pretty much all the way tightened out. And then we have a medium Contra, a yellow, which is a 1500. We also have a brand new Melosi belt on there as well. So. All right, here's where we're looking in the pre-bug now. Got everything in there, Melosi front plate, Melosi wing belt, stage six, pretty much everything else, NCY pulley, Melosi belt. We, we kind of got a mix of stuff going on in here, but everything's resealed, the cylinders back together, heads back on, put some new little fancy bolts along the scooter because I was missing some things. 
Uh, might check the carb jettings. I'm not too sure what's in here. I feel like I just checked it when I couldn't remember last time, but I already can't remember. I have too many, too many bikes right now. All right, boys, as I mentioned, we are going to be doing some reinforcements to the back of this frame for the stunt bars, basically to strengthen the scooter because the scooter rears are not that strong. So with that being said, I went and I cut out a steel plate and I went ahead and welded it on. And where the frame tubes end, right here on the corners, where this bar ran across, I went ahead and welded it up and up on this side because I've seen it peel back on a couple people as well. So we did that and then I just chopped that bolt off right here because I went and got a grade 12 bolt instead of the whatever comes on it right here. It's too hot to touch right now, but it's like a, probably a grade six or grade eight and that's what holds the bar on. Um, I have a couple ideas what I'm gonna start doing on the next ones. But uh, this will work for now. It's stronger. Like that part, I was more worried about the bolt right here. But this is just boxing it in. It's going to strengthen it a lot. So we went to the parts store. And um, what I'd want to do is stock it has an M8 bolt that's this big. I wanted to run an M10. The only issue with running an M10 is that an M10 nut does not fit in the scrape bars I made. So in the future, we're going to change that design on the, the next gen of these scrape bars to be able to hold a bigger nut. Um, the other option is, which would be really cool, is to run the bolt down. So you would drill that out and then you can run an Allen and then you would put the nut in the bottom of the frame and weld the nut in. The only problem is the way Zuma designed the rear of this frame, there's this little crossbar that goes across right here and that's directly in the middle of where this is. So that sits like right there. So you'd have to like cut that crossbar out somehow get the welder in there and weld the nut. So it would require you pretty much to take the, the frame off, everything off the frame and turn the bike upside down, which is a little bit of a pain. So for temporary, for now, as we can always go back and cut this off and redo it, I'm gonna take this, which is a grade 12.9. All right, what I did was I cut the head of the Allen bolt basically off to where it's almost flat. That way it was a little taller than how the stock mounting point was. So the bar was sitting a little bit more at an angle up. So I trimmed it to the exact, which is like 2.5 millimeters, and uh, grind off the edges. We're gonna try to get the weld pretty much up and around this to like the first thread. That way on the weaker point where it's like gets a little skinnier right there, it at least has the strength of the weld, so it doesn't have that urge to snap off right there at the head. All right, everything is now painted, and the reinforcement is complete. As you can see, I put in a flat piece of steel right here, like an eighth inch thick, ran a bead all the way up and down here. Not pretty, too pretty of a weld, but I didn't want to melt the actual metal because it's thin right here, so I didn't get it too hot. And uh, yeah, it still looks better almost than these stock welds, but did that. Then I replaced the stud and we grinded off the head on the Allen key so that this lip right here sits almost like factory. I threw the piece away, but it was two millimeters. So now it sits up just the exact stock mount. This is a grade 12.9 bolt, so it's way, way stronger. The other one, Basically what the problem is that it runs off these threads and the threads were a little too weak. Uh, like I said, my goal would be to upgrade this M8 to an M10 so it's a little thicker, but we'd have to figure out something for the bar and the 12 bars because I just didn't calculate that when we designed these. So as you can see, the welds on these scrape bars are just absolutely beautiful, done by the homie Performance Tube Fabrication. Um, we basically designed a jig together and then we did it with a MIG one, first, our, uh, first temporary bar was this one, this is all just MIG welded. This was like just the first gen for the titanium plate. And uh, I'm mentioning this now because right now I just threw three live on the website. So I only make them like four or five at a time because my boy Jeff is super busy with a lot of the car projects. But uh, it's been getting consistent on almost selling out instantly, almost the same like within a couple hours, every time I post like three or four of them for sale. So um, I think we're gonna go a little bit more on the next batch. And we're also gonna do a few little changes, like I said, would be very useful would be to uh, make a different setup for that um, due to the reinforcements we wanna do. Hopefully soon we'll be selling a kit with this reinforcement plate here and I'm also gonna do something different. So I might do it, like I said, where you can run a bolt down instead, but we might sell it with a kit like this um, with obviously not just trimming the head like this, get them actually sized and everything like that. This is all just one basically I made as a template. So while doing this, I came up with like a few ideas that'd be helpful but this is still a thousand times stronger and better than the stock stuff. So I'm pretty stoked on it right now. Yeah, I've seen people where this thing kind of like bends up or bends a certain way um, just because of the way it's designed. So this little cross plate right here is nothing crazy, but it adds so much more support. 
you would just need a welder. I, it basically runs around the frame here, so there's a bead here, and then up and down this whole thing. It just boxes it all the way in. Um, and also came through, like I said, and closed the ends of these welds because they weren't completely closed. So we filled those all the way into the frame, hopefully just making this a little bit stronger. And uh, hopefully we'll be preventing this from cracking. It'd be cool if we do one for the front too, and you would just slide it in right here, and then you would just have to like run one bead here, here, and then uh, maybe down on this side. But I don't really know how useful that is given that this is here. So it might be best to figure out some type of boxing here to like really reinforce this right here, this little area. I don't know, there's always stuff that we can come up with more, but uh, more to come on that whole setup, but that's how it's all reinforced now. All right, just clear coated this bar. As you can see, there's a slight difference in them. Kind of see which one's a little bit darker. This one's a little bit cleaner, but it's clear coated. Uh, now I can throw the titanium plate back on. I already put the plastic on here, and I went ahead and actually trimmed the back plastic out so then the actual scrape bar sits super nice all the way straight on the metal because I didn't want it sitting on the part of the plastic like how it does stock. So sits in there really nice. Now it's just time to bolt everything up. And boy, this thing's gonna look good with a freshy scrape bar on it. Some fresh hardware on her. It's got the locking nut in there. The stud's a little longer, so it's easier to start putting it on. You don't have to drop it in there and try to thread it crazy on the stock because the stock stud is so short. But man, these bars look so good on anything. It's like, it just looks, it makes the bike look so sick. Also, as you can see, this is all TIG welded stainless and uh, able to remove the titanium block. And you can buy these titanium block replacements on the website. Countersunk bolts, so nice. That's what she's looking like, boys. Damn, it always looks so good, especially with the pipe. Well, due to the loud noises that I was hearing from that motor, I already ordered an entire rebuild, basically. We got ourselves, oh yeah, I forgot. Thank, good thing I ordered this, too. Pliny wrist pin. We got a Doppler crank in here. And as the most commented and wanted thing on the channel for one of my pre-bugs, a stage six cylinder. I've done a stage six cylinder MK2 race on the F12, but every time I post something about the, the Pliny courses on the pre-bug, someone's gotta say something about the stage six cylinder, so. This one's for you guys. This is the Doppler Endurance Crank, full circle crank, and uh, we got our stage six dual ring, because we want the reliability a little bit. We got on single ring on the F12, but we're going dual ring on the pre-bug, of course, just for reliability and long last longevity. But uh, stage six cylinder's looking pretty good. It has this extra little port, rather than like the Pliny has too, so. But the ports look pretty good on it, pretty big. So we'll probably still get it ported, but uh, we definitely have the case match too. So I'm not sure when this is going on and I don't even know what bike I want to put it in because I'm supposed to be leaving this one up in Oregon and that's in like a week. So I don't think I'm gonna have time to rebuild this one now. So I don't know how exactly we're gonna do this now. Um, I'm thinking worst case scenario, we might be just pulling the motor out of this thing and putting it in here. And then that way we can keep the stage six down here because uh, this motor is the one that really needs, sounds like it needs a rebuild in the bottom end. Um, so I think that we need to do something about that but this motor just has a fresh Corsa Melosi crank I'm thinking maybe we'll just swap put that one in here take this one out and build this to the stage six because we want the stage six on the bike we're gonna be riding here at home all right boys it's time to go test this thing out now why does this thing feel faster than my blue one This thing doesn't want to idle at all right now. Hopefully, hopefully she's just out of gas. <laughs> she's pretty damn low. Let's see what's going on here, boys. I don't know why this thing doesn't want to idle today. Oh, she might have just been out of gas, boys. She's idling now. Wow, we were that low on gas. We barely made it. We barely made it to the gas station. Oh, 
<laughs> almost ate shit. I almost ate it, boys. That's why it feels like this. I forgot we put a brand new tire on the back. The tire has so much air in it. That's why it feels so funky right now. It's all over the place right now. Low pressure, boys. You need that. Otherwise, the tire is too round. When you put all that weight on the back, you want the tire a little bit softer, a little flatter. It helps you keep centered on the wheelies. Just a good tip. Man, the skate bar looks so good on this thing. It's still soggy though. I need that quick throttle on here. This throttle's a little too long. Yeah, I think we gotta lighten these rollers up a little bit more. So anyways, on our spark plug coil, where the back of this thing, it gets mounted to kind of like that rear fender area, and it has that tab, there's a ground wire that goes on top of it also. It's all held in by one screw. That screw was so loose when I took this thing apart yesterday that I'm thinking this thing had some spark knock going on. Like that screw was so loose, it was causing it to like misfire almost in a way. I think that was a lot of the noise we were hearing, especially in the top end when we were on it. We're about to find out right now we hit the road, but right now this thing's feeling pretty damn good. Stock handlebars still feel the best. I've yet to find a pair of naked bars that could feel as good as the stock bars. This thing feels quick though, dude. Hold a pin for a while. 289, now we just hit 300. This thing's running really cool today. about 10 3 too. Oh boy, it's hot. It's like a blow dryer outside with this heat. Well, it's not making that noise in the top end no more. Like I said, I think that was a misfire from how loose that uh, ignition coil was. It was like crazy loose. <laughs> We gotta make sure the scrape bar is good, right? Oh yeah. Wow. Oh man, this one feels good. Oh man. All right, so I think we're gonna consider this Zuma complete for now until I figure out exactly what I wanna do. I'm leaning more towards taking this motor out of this thing and uh, pulling the motor out of my blue one, putting the motor from the blue one into here, making sure that this thing's solid and ready to go because this blue motor is completely fresh, it's ready. Um, and then I have that stage six bore and everything and I really would wanna use that on this bike, I think, since this one's gonna be staying here in Vegas and uh, this is pretty much, I guess you could call it my daily driver. If we're going out on a ride out, this is gonna be the one I'm gonna be riding. It's my stunt bike, it's my favorite bike, and uh, I built it more around for my style of riding, so that's gonna be that one. So I'm thinking that's what's gonna be the plan, um, but that means we're gonna have to do a motor swap here in the next week before we leave up to there. So I could utilize this one. The only, wrong, the only problem with that is that this thing is just so clean. It's a BWS, it's so simple. Um, I just wanna keep this thing clean same with this one this one's just completely bone stock original 300 miles i don't really want to build this one up um, so they're harder to come by especially the bws one 
because uh, for all the comments I get too saying that this is not a Zuma, in America, this is a Zuma. That's what they are in America. Not overseas. In Canada, they came as the BWS, same headlight, everything like that. And then overseas, like Europe and everything, it was the booster, different headlight. The frame is a tiny bit different because the plastics mount a little bit different. The front fairings, one piece, it's a little different how that mounts. The rear fairings are different how they mount. There's a bunch of little tiny differences, but overall, still vertical Minarelli, still a lot of the same thing. But this is a Zuma here in America. So, um, only difference with the BWS is literally just the graphics and the fact that it comes in kilometers. Uh, everything else is identical as the Zuma. Still a couple things that we didn't get to in this video, and that would be the quick throttle, and plus, after riding the red one, I think I'm gonna change the weights around a little bit and drop them all down to fives. Um, it just feels way better for wheelies. It picks up a little better at the higher end, and uh, I think that's what we're gonna go with, boys. So, we got the Yusuni R back on the red one. No more overrange on it. Back to stock size pulley setup. It feels so much better. The overrange just felt a little sluggy. I don't know if it's how the rear pulley was on this or just didn't have enough power to carry it through the overrange setup. But the overrange is feeling amazing on the F12, so we did a win with that. And we also did a win taking it out of here. So it was a win-win in this case. And uh, God, the red one feels so good. I just love the way the stock handlebars feel. Believe it or not, it might not look like it in this video, but we got a lot done on this thing with the OG Red Zuma. And uh, I'd say got it to probably it's best it's had since I owned it, since I haven't really touched that thing since I bought it. So uh, that's going to do it for this one, boys. Like I said, stay tuned. We'll throw a quick throttle on it and probably a bit more tuning in the next one and also getting some more bikes ready for the trip and a uh, big Pook update coming very, very soon as well. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you guys check out the description down below if you guys want to buy a scrape bar. They might be sold out by the time you see this video because there's only three and they typically sell out within like that at first hour. So uh, Make sure you go check the website out, and we got some fire merch coming very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys in the next one.